and welcome again to uh, Science Time with me, uh, Alex Foden, on behalf of Nonstop Kids Television. Uh, today I'm going to be teaching you uh, three different things that I've got planned for you, uh, and hopefully you're going to enjoy them because I absolutely love all of what we're about to see. We're going to see some things change colour, and we're going to learn how to make some secret messages, but first of all, I'm going to teach you how to make uh, your own personal diver. This is a bit of straw with some blue tack on it inside a bottle, and if you just squeeze the bottle, you'll see the diver moves down and then moves back up again like that if you let go and you can sort of uh, hover it and make it move up and down like that. Um, I'm going to go into uh, the reason why this works and we're going to learn how to make one of these. But first, uh, we're going to need to do some preparation for things that change colour and for um, uh, Right, yeah, the things that change colour and we'll get on to the secret messages and stuff a little bit later on. Now you are going to need some adult help with this. Uh, a little bit later on we're going to be using an iron, you can see it just bare in the background. You're going to need some adult help with the iron. We're also going to be using a cooker and a saucepan and some sharp knives. So it's very important that you get an adult to help you uh, with the sharp knives and cooker and everything uh, like that. Uh, we're also going to need some scissors, we're going to need some paper, some blue tack and some straws. Uh, we're going to get back, we're going to get into that in just a moment though. So first of all, um, oh you're also going to need a red cabbage as well. Uh, we're going to get on with what we're going to do with the red cabbage first and then I'm going to explain how to make the diver thing uh, and then uh, I'll teach you how to make some secret messages uh, and then we'll do something with the red cabbage. But first of all, uh, we need to cut the red cabbage up a little right, bit. So I am back uh, with our red cabbage. We have it uh, here on our chopping board here and we have our sharp knife. Now it's very important that when you do this you get adults to help you and you are very very careful with your fingers. So we've got our flat bit here. What we want is we just want a little bit off the end here. We want some of the leaves like this. We don't need too much. We're going to have a little bit more I think uh, just to really show you how to do this. Uh, but if you do this much, you're going to have absolutely loads of uh, what's called a pH solution. I'll explain what that is as we go along. Now we don't want it this big, so we're just going to slice it up a little bit uh, finer than this. Uh, make sure you watch your fingers and you be careful of your fingers uh, while you're doing this. There we go. Uh, and what we're going to do, we're going to take this and we're going to put it into a saucepan like that and we're going to boil it now we're going to boil it for about 10 15 minutes because what you want is you want the nice sort of red color of the leaves to seep into the water now i've got a boiled kettle here we're going to pour the boiling water over the red cabbage so it fills most of the saucepan up and we're going to turn it on so that it boils like that so we now have our red cabbage boiling um and we're going to come back to that in just a moment okay that's going to need to boil for about 10 minutes you want some of the you want the uh water in there uh to become nice and pink like the red cabbage nice and purpley pink like the red cabbage um so while we're doing that i'm going to teach you how to make the diver ever ever leave uh, the cooker unattended, never leave saucepans unattended, always make sure there's someone watching them. I'm in the same room, I can see the saucepan, so it's fine, it's safe for me to be doing that. Uh, but now I'm gonna teach you how to make one of these. Now the way that this works is, is actually this straw in the middle here, I'll, 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 I'll teach you how to make this in a minute, but the way that this works, this straw in the middle of this uh, bottle here is filled with air. Now what you do is as you squeeze, you actually force some of the water inside this bottle, inside the tube there, uh, and it actually changes the weight of the straw. It makes the straw heavier, which is what makes it sink, uh, or it makes it lighter, which is what makes it float. Uh, so to do this, to make this, we're gonna need a few things. Uh, and I'm gonna... What we need is a straw. These need to be quite strong straws. These are paper straws, and I've managed to make it work with a paper straw. Um, but if you can get a plastic straw, uh, they tend to work a little bit better, they're a little bit easier, they don't sort of squeeze and, and, and get as wet and it's, it's a bit easier to do. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to take uh, probably about that much straw. Parents, it's probably about three or four inches. Uh, kids, it's probably about 
uh, probably about seven or eight centimeters. Uh, it, it, the longer you can make it, the easier it is to make this work and float and, and, and get all the balances just right. Um, but it works with like different size straws. In fact, that's an experiment you can try. Uh, you can time it, like squeeze it and see how fast it goes down. Maybe put two different size ones in there, see if they can race, see which one wins. Uh, and also see if you can work out why whichever one wins, wins. Um, but I'll just show you how to make this one first. Um, so what you need is a straw and you need some blue tack. What you're gonna do, you're gonna take this blue tack, you're gonna take a fair amount of it. You might not necessarily need all of it, but you're gonna need quite, you, you might need quite a lot of blue tack. And what you're gonna need to do is take a bit off. Uh, it's probably about half that much. Uh, probably about uh, like a sort of small pea size. There's the camera. There it is. Pour a small sort of pea sized blob of blue tack like that. Focus on the blue tack. There we go. Uh, so you can see that there. Uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to take uh, this piece of blue tack and you're going to put it on the top of your straw and you're going to seal it all around the top. And that's going to stop any of the air in the straw getting out. So you're just going to seal it nice and around the top like that. Now if you put this in the water, what's going to happen uh, is because the air is here and the air wants to get out, it will flip the straw upside down like that and all the air will get out and the straw will go straight to the bottom. So what you need to do now is do what's called counterbalancing. You need to put some blue tack at the bottom here to uh, make sure it stays upright, but also so that it stays floating as well. And this is a bit tricky, or this can be a bit tricky. So the best way to do it, I've found, is to get some uh, blue tack and put that probably about two thirds of the way down. So it's below the halfway point. If it's above the halfway point, it will put more weight here and it will make it flip more easily. So you want it so that, say there's about halfway, you want it below the halfway. And then what I find uh, easier to do is, is, is to get another bit of blue tack and put that underneath it like this and then what you can do is you can adjust this one and this one so that it stays sort of like that in the water now it doesn't as you can see it doesn't have to be perfectly flat this one in fact isn't like you can see here that, that sort of isn't and then you squeeze it a little bit and it gets a bit flatter and then it gets straightened up as you squeeze it and then it goes down like that and then as you let go it goes back up again like this uh, so, but like I said, the best way to do this uh, is to get a nice big bowl of water like this. Uh, let's over here. There we go, a nice big bowl of water like this. And what you're going to do, you're going to take this and you're going to put it in there. That's actually, that's fairly okay. Oh, and it's steadying out to be about right. So we've actually got that about right first time. But what we normally need to do is maybe take it out, take a little blue tack off the bottom, off the top, move them around until it stays sort of floating at the top of the water like that, but mostly level. Then what we're going to need to do is get a bottle of water. Now it's very important that this bottle of water is filled right up to the top. And then what you're going to do, so you can, uh, if you put your finger in, like practically, like, if I just do that, you can see there loads of water comes out. It's filled practically right to the top. And then you're going to put your little, uh, we're going to call it a diver, inside there. And now we've got two in there, we can have a race. And then we can let them go back up and down and up and down. And what you can do is you can put loads of them in there and you can try and work out uh, why which ones go up, why which ones go down, uh, why they go faster, why they go slower. Uh, maybe some of them are heavier than the other ones. Um, you need to uh, try different length straws, try different whip straws as well. That's always something good to try if you can get maybe thicker straws. Uh, try doing that, see if you can make it work then. Uh, so you right. can maybe even try like taking it into a swimming pool. Now if you take it into a swimming pool, you're out of quarantine that is when you're allowed to go back out swimming again uh when you go swimming again i'm just going to drive this table off a little bit 
uh, while I'm talking to you. When you're allowed to go swimming in, you can even take this with you. And what you can do is you can dive into the deep end of the pool with it, and you can take it right down to the bottom and see what happens to the straws then. Maybe the straws, uh, maybe they float, maybe they stay floating, maybe they go down, but don't squeeze them. Just take it down to the bottom of the pool and see what happens to the, to the little uh, diver thing in it. See if it goes up, see if it goes down. Um, and uh, when you've done that, you can see if you can work out why. Maybe if, it's, if it goes down, there's lots of water around it and the water is pressing inside uh, and that's what's causing it to, um, uh, to go down. Or maybe if it stays up, maybe there's not enough water pressure outside or maybe you're not squeezing it. Um, so anyway, that is a diver thing. That is one of my favorite things to do. Um, I'm also gonna teach you now very quickly while we're waiting for that uh, cabbage water to boil, how to write secret messages. So we've got a bit of paper here. Now it's already a bit wet, so we're gonna avoid that bit, but we're gonna uh, go here. And we've got some lemon juice here. Now this is lemon juice. Uh, we also need something very small to put the lemon juice in. So I've got, uh, here we go with this. I've got a little small bowl here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take this lemon juice. We're gonna put the lemon juice, why is it not opening? There we go. Look at that. We're going to take the lemon juice, we're going to pour a lot of that into this little bowl here. Now, what you then need to do is take a... I had one around somewhere. You need to take... Oh, here it is. You need to take one of these. Now, if you're in America, it's called a Q-tip. If you're here, it's called a cotton bud. And what you're going to do, you're going to dip the cotton bud in there so that you get loads of lemon juice on here. And what you're going to do, you're going to use this to write your secret message on here. Now it might be something to your mum, it might be I love you to your mum or your sister, it might be I hate you, I don't know. And what you're going to do, you're going to write your message on here with your lemon juice. And what you're going to do, you're just going to leave that to dry. So, uh, that is your message in lemon juice. You're gonna leave that to dry, and when it dries, it will dry sort of the same color of the paper. And what you can do then is you can iron it, and it will, uh, the sugars in the lemon juice will sort of burn, uh, and the paper around it won't. Uh, and what will happen is you'll get a brown sort of hello message. Uh, I'm just gonna let that dry a little bit. Uh, maybe I put a bit too much lemon juice on there, so I'm just gonna see if I can, uh, Make a small smiley face, it'll dry a bit quicker. And you're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna go back to the boil now. What I'm gonna do is just gonna check, see how how boiled the water is. Uh, so let's do this. We're gonna get a spoon. In fact, actually, we've got a ladle in here. Let's get a ladle. No, I'll use a spoon. Right, okay, we've got a spoon. I'm just gonna take, oh yes, look at that. So if I just show you what's happened now, we've got like that sort of nice colour of water there. What we're going to need to do now, ooh, careful. What we need to do now is empty the bowl, empty the saucepan, and we want to keep the water. So what we've got, we've got a bowl, I've emptied this, this is one I used earlier. Uh, and we need a sieve or strainer. In fact, actually, if you've got coffee filters, this works with coffee filters or filter paper, that works even better. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna pour this juice through the strainer so you don't have any cabbage left in it. And you're left, ooh, I'll show you, ooh, careful, with this sort of bluey, whatever -y liquid. Now what you need to do is wait for this to cool down. So we're gonna wait for this to cool down. Um, and we'll get back to our lemon juice, which is mostly dried here. This is a bit, but still wet. But what I'm going to show you, if you take it to the ironing board, if you take a hot iron and you iron, oops, a hot iron, and you iron over it, you should hopefully start to see, maybe the sign's not hot enough. You should hopefully start to see the hello starting to come through there and a little smiley face down here. Um, so that is one way of making invisible ink. You might have to iron it for a little bit longer. Make sure the iron is very, very hot. That is one way of making invisible ink. Uh, we're just gonna wait for that, 
uh, cabbage water to cool down. I'm going to show you some really cool stuff that you can do with right, it. So I am back. Uh, the juice has cooled down. Uh, uh, it probably tastes terrible. I wouldn't drink it to be honest. Uh, so just going to quickly show you a few uh, cool things about this. And what we're going to do, we're going to use some of this in the next episode uh, to to have a you know a bit of a play to see uh, different bits and pieces. Uh, but for now. Uh, I'm just going to quickly show you what this is. This is called a pH test. So what we need is a glass of some description. Uh, I've got a small glass over here. Now, if you've got a chemistry set at home and you've got some test tubes in it, that is absolutely perfect for this. What you're going to do, you need to take a glass of your juice. Glass of my juice. Uh, now, this is what's called a pH test. So we've got some of our lemon juice here from earlier. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a bit of that lemon juice and we're going to pour it inside there. And you can see it changes colour uh, to be like a bright red sort of colour there, like that. Now, uh, the reason for that is because um, this lemon juice uh, is a special type of chemical that scientists call uh, an acid. Uh, now, the acid. Um, uh, it, it uh, reacts with one of the chemicals in the, pig, in the uh, water that's come from the cabbage skin uh, and it changes colour. And what you can do is you can take various household objects, so if we take some washing up liquid for instance and we can pour that in here like this and we can see if that does anything. Uh, maybe even give it a little bit of a mix, make sure it really gets in there. Uh, and you can see that the washing up liquid doesn't actually change the colour of this at all, which suggests that it will either be a bit more neutral or maybe even uh, what's called an alkali, which is the opposite of an acid. Uh, and you can basically just take loads and loads and loads of different household liquids. So if you take some more liquid, uh, what do we have lying around? We've got some. Uh, da -da 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 -da. We have some hand soap as well. We could use hand soap. Maybe you can stick some of that in there. Uh, you can maybe even put some salt in there, see if that changes the pH of the uh, liquid. Uh, there's absolutely loads you can do with that. Basically what I would suggest you do, uh, if you want something to do, is go and have a hunt around your house, have a look um, for different uh, liquids that you can find, maybe orange juice, black currant juice, uh, steal some of your parents' alcohol if you want to, and see if that's acid or alkali. Um, yeah, and you can go on a bit of a treasure hunt. And what we'll do, uh, in the next episodes, I'll show you a few common sort of household liquids that I have lying around and show you if they're acid or alkali uh, and then we'll do some other cool stuff. Uh, that is all that I've got time for today. Thank you very, very much for joining in to what help me do some science. Uh, please do go and try all of this at home, uh, especially if you've got some red cabbages. That is my favourite experiment to do out of all of this. The divers are so much fun as well. Uh, make sure you let the lemon juice dry more than I let it dry, otherwise it's not going to work like it didn't for me. Uh, but other than that, have a fantastic, fantastic day. Uh, enjoy yourselves. Thank you.